Hey guys, welcome back to another video in my 3D print vlog series. Sorry for the delay with this video, but I was traveling on vacation for the past two weeks and I didn't get a chance to upload a new video. As you may have seen in my previous videos, I purchased 40 Bamboo A1 combo printers during Bamboo Labs' second anniversary sale. I tried to document the setup of these printers in the warehouse, but first I wanted to go over a little bit of history I have with the A1 printers from Bamboo Labs. So when the A1 first went on sale and when it was first released back in December of 2023, I purchased seven printers from Micro Center when they first released. Six of them were brand new and one was a return from a customer who claimed he couldn't get anything to stick on the bed. So luckily for me at the time I was at Micro Center uh, when the customer was returning it and I was able to grab the A1 combo for just around $250 which was around 60% uh, off at the time. Anyway, for those of you guys who are familiar with what happened uh, around the end of January and early February, that's when Bamboo Labs issued a recall statement for the A1 printers stating that a very small number of A1 printers had faulty heat bed cables and some of these faulty heat bed cables ended up catching fire. So they issued a recall on the printers and they advised everybody who had A1 printers to stop using them immediately and to either you could either return it at the time uh, for an $80 gift card uh, to be used towards any other Bamboo Lab product, or you could keep the printer and in about two months they would ship out new replacement bed cables. Um, and so if you wanted to keep your printer and wait for those new heat bed replacement cables, you would get a $120 voucher for each printer that you own. So the route I took was I decided to wait two months. I used the two months. Uh, I used the printers for the two months in that time frame. Um, and then at the end of the two month period, because I purchased these printers from Micro Center, I had to go back to Micro Center and deal with Micro Center uh, as, it, as it pertained to the return process. So basically, Micro Center allowed me to return the printers I had for brand new A1 combo printers. So basically, I could swap out my old printers for new printers and basically they would give you a $120 gift card per printer. Now what I didn't realize at the time was when I returned these printers, it was during Bamboo Lab's second anniversary sale where they discounted the A1 combo by $70. So I went to, so when I went to exchange these printers at Micro Center, they honored the price difference from when I purchased it to the new sale price. So in total, I received $190 per printer. Uh, it was a $120 gift card plus the $70 price difference in the in the sale price of the A1 combo printer. So in total, I got $1,330 extra after returning and exchanging my old printers for new printers. And so after that, I ended up purchasing 40 more A1 combo printers from their website directly. Getting all of these printers set up in the printer took a lot of time just you know, receiving all of them, setting up the racks, and assembling each of the printers. Also we weren't fully set up with the electrical system at the time, so we had to hire an electrician to come in and install uh, more outlets and more breakers. So I basically had an electrician come in and install 8 new outlets, their own 20 amp breaker, and this should allow me to get up to 12 printers per outlet, so 8 times 12, uh, that would add an additional 96 printers to the warehouse. So for now, I only ordered uh, an additional 40 A1 printers, plus the extra ones I got from Micro Center. So these took a, a qu quite some time to set each one of these up individually. Um, I had to get the electrical set up, the racking set up, also I had to purchase UPS units each individual rack has their own UPS units. Um, you'll see here that these are the new printers here that have the braided heat bed cable as well as this little uh, knob on the back end to prevent the heat bed cable from hitting against the wall or if you're putting it in a tight space. So we're almost there. We're almost fully set up. We're about 90% set up with all the printers. Uh, you'll see in a little bit. I'll show you a video of us trying to run these extension cords up on top of the ceiling and down to their... Uh, respective outlets. So 
So here is the electrician installing the ANU outlet right to the electrical box. So I decided to put these pretty close to, to the electrical box. I didn't want them to run, run wires, you know, halfway across the warehouse. Uh, so instead I just had them put them on this wall right next to the electrical box. And you can see here that we still have some room for additional uh, outlets or uh, breakers here. So in the future, if I need more capacity, I can always uh, add a little bit more. But we are we are pretty much getting uh, to full capacity here at this at this space. So these are three D printed uh, sort of brackets or clamps, whatever you want to call them, that we attached directly to the steel beams that are running across the top of the warehouse. So once these uh, clamps are kind of put into place, they're very, very hard to move. Um, they, they're, they're kind of stuck in place there. So what we're doing here is running the extension cords through each of these clamps on the ceiling. And the idea is basically just to run these down and drop them down to each individual rack of A1 printers so that they can get power. These were, I believe, 50 foot extension cables that were just purchased off Amazon. Uh, my electrician just told me which ones to buy, so I just bought whichever one he suggested. <coughs> So here we are trying to manage these three extension cords across the ceiling and to their outlets on the other side of the room. And also, I didn't want the I didn't want the extension cords kind of running on the floor because uh, you know just for for safety reasons, and uh, I didn't want employees to be tripping over them. I just thought that this would be a better solution. Uh, so hopefully, hopefully this works out well and as I intended it to work. The only other part that we kind of need to figure out is uh, probably 3D printing some hooks that go along the wall where the outlets are so that they're not drooping down. Um, you'll see in a little bit here that the cape, uh, extension cords kind of just droop from that steel beam down to the outlet. So I want to I want to get some some hooks to attach the extension cords to along the wall. So there we go, all of them are plugged in. So far we have three racks set up. I think we have another rack that needs to be set up. So we'll set that up in a few days. And so here is kind of the final setup for each row and each rack of printers. So on each rack, we have three rows of printers, two on each row. And then we have one UPS unit that's in the middle that supplies uh, all six printers on that respective rack. Um, so you see here, this is kind of how the warehouse looks with the extension cords. And these are the UPS units that we purchased from Amazon. Uh, they came in, they are relatively heavy and we, we can probably fit about six to seven printers at the same time uh, with these CyberPower UPS units. Um, so here is the just another look at the rack. Again, two on each shelf, UPS in the middle, and the other, you know, so basically six on each rack, two racks of six, that's 12, and then three, ra three four rows of 12 printers is 48 printers, uh, is what we'll have in the middle here for the A1 combo units. Also working on printing out some new products to bring to market uh, these are uh, narwhal, narwhal toys so these are like fidgeting narwhals 
um, just printing them in, in different colors here. And with these A1 combo printers being set up and being uh, powered on and ready to print, we're going to be printing a lot more multicolor prints just because we have the capacity to do so. Um, so we're going to be doing a lot more fidget toys, maybe some mystery dragons, uh, mystery mini figurines, um, and we'll see what sells well. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys have any tips or anything along the lines of maybe how I can organize these extension cords a, li extension cords a little bit better, please leave a comment down below. Um, I, I do try to read through all the comments and try to reply to all the comments. So um, again, this is the wall that I want to install some hooks to hang the extension cords so that they're not, again, drooping down. Um, so if you guys like this type of content, please leave a comment, uh, like, and subscribe. I will be coming out with more videos in the future. I think a lot of people are interested in, you know, one, how much money uh, this type of setup can make, and also, two, what type of products I sell. So I'm going to make a few, a few videos in the coming days uh, talking about those topics. And so if you're interested in that, please, uh, please like, follow, and subscribe, and stay tuned for the next video. And if there's anything that you're interested in learning about or if you have any questions about the print farm and the operations of the business, please uh, leave a comment below and I will try to respond, either respond or make a video uh, about that topic. So towards the end of the video, I'll just show some clips of my vacation travels for the past two weeks. I went to Florida for a week and then I went on a cruise for a week.